What does spirits tell you is going on with the world right now, Kim? Every soul on this planet decided to be here for this incredible transition and shift in consciousness to a higher level in humanity. We're getting rid of the, the me mentality and we're headed into the we mentality. But before all this newness can kind of emerge, we have to say goodbye to the old. Everything that people have been doing up to this point, they have been only an apprentice for their real mission, for their real soul mission. But how do we start to get at the essence of removing all of these filters, all of these programs? How do we get at our true essence? You know, I've often asked myself that question over the years. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wondered what spirits are saying these days and what they have to tell you about the condition of the world, then do we have the happy medium Kim Russo show for you. Today I'll be talking with Kim Russo, one of our all-time favorite mediums and human beings and the most accurate one ever in our lives. She's the best-selling author of The Happy Medium, the TV star of shows such as A&E's The Haunting Of, and an incredible teacher of mediumship and connecting with the other side. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about what the spirits are saying about humanity, how we can hear them, and where we get to go from here. So welcome back to the show, Kim. Are you ready to shine? Woohoo! Yes, yes. Hi, Michael. <laughs> how are you? You beat me to it. Woohoo! I am doing great. We have lots and lots to cover. I definitely have baby energy, best way to put it, all over me right now because Hanna Bear was here uh, crawling, hopping, swinging upside down <laughs> right before taking a nap just a few minutes ago. And you have been the most accurate prognosticator of prognosticators in our life. But before we dive right in there, and before we dive right in and before we go there, what does spirits tell you is going on with the world right now, Kim? How much time do we have, Michael? <laughs> we got about 90 minutes. Do we need 90 years? <laughs> wow. I mean, that's a loaded question. But um, for the most part, as you may know, I'm sure you do, Michael, we're definitely coming out of the age of Pisces, which the, which was the age of the patriarchal mentality, uh, you know, right into the age of Aquarius, which is the age of freedom and expression and uh, just bringing all of our gifts online, but before all this newness can kind of emerge, we have to say goodbye to the old. And saying goodbye is never easy. Yeah. And our human nature does not like change. Uh, so because we know what we have, we don't know what's coming. So that's what's happening. We are right in a transitional stage Every soul on this planet decided to be here for this incredible transition and shift in consciousness to a higher level in humanity. So we're getting rid of the, the me mentality and we're headed into the we mentality. I love it, but it begets the big picture question. Is there an element of the me mentality, either physically or energetically, that, forgive me, is holding on and causing the um, hoop show that appears to be going on right now as we're making this transition. For many, yes. For many, yes. So many of us have learned to live in our lower chakras, uh, create just the fight or flight mentality, the greed mentality. What I teach my students is every fear translates to one thing, and that is the fear of death. Yeah. So if we don't have enough, we may pass. We, if, we, if we 
afraid of heights, we may fall to our death, so on and so forth. If you break every fear down is the fear of death. And I do believe my sole mission, or one of them, is to dispel that fear of death. And that consciousness does survive this very, very temporary uh, existence uh, on our planet, 3D, one of the densest planets there is. Uh, so we come here to kind of just get beat up in a sense, you know, our, our souls has to have to transcend and wake up to the reality. So this is the, the dream or the nightmare, I should say. And then we're waking up to the truth. I want to ask what the truth is before I do that though. I, I can remember, I mentioned it in another show. So forgive me, everybody who's heard this, but Jessica went through a uh, ayahuasca ceremony many years ago with a shaman. And all of a sudden I saw lifetime after lifetime after lifetime of her. And she did as well until she stopped on like a Peruvian grandma, Peruvian auntie. And the Peruvian auntie said to her, which was really a message for all of humanity. How many times do you have to go through this meaning the suffering of the journey, the nauseousness of the journey, the difficulty of the journey before you get it, before you stop doing this. So the question is, how many times do we have to go through a human suffering experience before we say, does humanity have to be this way or can we choose to elevate out of 3D consciousness? Some people are doing it spontaneously from the light codes that are coming from the central sun. So the sun codes are coming in differently. Uh, and those are the codes that make the trees grow and make the, the leaves fall off and make everything bloom when it is supposed to. And so, of course, it's connected to our DNA as well. So the sun is the key. And right now the sun is different and it's emitting different light code frequencies and it's connecting right with our DNA. So whether or not we know what's happening to us, people are noticing they just feel different. Some people notice they don't care about the mundane. Uh, that's what the spiritual awakening is all about. So what I would say to that is depending on at what point your DNA is activated by these light codes, that's when these the people will wake up. So it's sort of like a Kundalini experience. You, you cannot rush it. It has to happen when it's supposed to, when the person is ready. Uh, and sometimes it could be one event that just wakes you up like that, like a near-death experience. And others have this lifetime journey of searching and reading and taking classes and finding spiritual teachers. It really depends on the person's experience. I can hear our audience going, Kim, is there any way I can get there faster? Is there anything I can do to make it easier on this journey? Well, I can only speak what I'm is working for me. And I also know what's working for a lot of other people. But Anything that brings our energy down, like a wet blanket, we have to remove that blanket. Uh, a lot of it's thought process. Uh, for me, one of the biggest things was to turn off the television. I never really was a big TV watcher, but the news is spewing fear every two minutes. Makes us think that we have no chance on this planet. And every it has us thinking that every place we look, we're in danger, simply not the truth. It's uh, You have to get rid of a lot of the thought processes that don't serve us, that are not true, uh, and that have been programmed into our consciousness. Uh, so if it, there were certain things, Michael, that never felt right to me, even as a child, like giving my power away. Do not give your power away to other people thinking that they will help you or they can save you because that person's just looking for the next guy to save them. So we really have to go inward into our heart spaces and need to remove the fears from the root chakra, move out of the lower chakras. So for people that don't know what chakras are, they're energy systems in the body. Uh, and in my readings lately, I'm seeing a lot of clogged root chakras, which tells me there's a lot of trauma from the past, from past lives, from childhood, uh, and it kind of needs to come out 
uh, some people can do shadow work. Please watch your diet because what you put in comes out literally and figuratively. Uh, eat foods that have higher vibrations. I like to surround myself with different colors. Colors uh, in the higher realms perspective and spectrum have can raise your vibration. Uh, smile even if you don't feel like it. I love to dance. Keep the music playing, your favorite music. Uh, and don't watch all this gloom and doom on uh, the internet, knowing that we came here right now to make a difference. Even if it's just your light being here, your light makes a difference in every place you go. And you, most people's light is very infectious. But yeah, we have to turn up the volume. Thank you. I want to dive more into light. I want to dive more into why we're here, our soul plan, and, and what spirits, angels, guides, all of them are doing and saying at this time. However, I want to back up. What can you tell me more about light codes? Okay, so I'm not an expert in light codes. I just know, and it makes perfect sense to me. That's why people say the son of God, the mm -hmm. sun is always such a big a big word in our vocabulary the codes on they're like they're, they're they unlock the the codes in our body so if you all see what a dna strand looks like right they look like kind of like squiggly with all these different lines in them so if you want to know the scientific angle of this the codes there's more codes being downloaded and you know, we are just so connected to the sun and the and the moon and the moon. So, but the sun itself is moving closer to our galaxy, and there it's it's we're having upgrades, just like a computer would have an upgrade. So there are more upgraded codes, just like when you make a website, there's coding involved. So we're coming back online to our gifts, to the way it should have been when these. DNA codes were kind of split and cut thousands of years ago. That's a whole nother video to talk about. But we've been taken off. You offline. know, I'm going to have to go there, Kim. <laughs> well, you, you know, we could give the abbreviated version of it, but we Would have definitely, it. we have definitely been taken offline by some nefarious powers that are on our planet. That if if you don't know about who they are, they're the people that want to stay in control and control, you know, 95% of humanity, maybe even 98% of humanity, uh, just to keep control. And you could see it in everything that has been taught in our education system. We were never really taught life skills to survive on our own. How many people do you know that if the power grid went down tomorrow, could literally have food, create food, make food, hunt for food, fish for food? Not many. So we've given our power away to, the, to it's a program. We all were born into it. But now people are changing. They're starting to get wise. They're going back to basics. They're learning about what they're grandmothers did their grandpas and the you know, generations before them how they survived how they kept maintained their health and we're going back to all of these this knowledge and uh, i know for one i am anyway i love anything natural uh that god put on this earth everything there's there's an answer for every ailment there's there's a solution that exists god planted everything that we need here naturally but it's been taken away from us so it was taken away and and i also hear you discussing central sun and us coming back which makes me think of procession every twenty six thousand five hundred years and this coming back around of energy it, is this a time where we are naturally able to step more into our power or a time where it becomes easier to take our lives back from the powers that be and is spirit since this is a show about spirit and what we're hearing from the other side are they not only the cheerleaders on the other side but are they kind of guiding and helping us 
to get the reins back of the individual rather than the muhuhaha powers that be, shall we say? Oh, absolutely. None of us are alone. Okay. And as I always like to say, we were born with a built in navigation system, and it has all the directions to our destination or where we where our soul contract needs to bring us. Yeah. Just it's it's the planned route. And there's not just one way to get there. But it really seems like a time of of darkness, of fear, of worry and anxiety. And I'm wondering if that's basically everything that's just been uh pushed under the carpet coming up to be healed and it's actually good for us. Yeah, because they're triggers. They're triggers for us. Everything is triggering us, moving us out of our comfort zone. Uh, it's it's causing us to take action or prompting us to take action for taking our power back. And that's also in private relationships, not just on a world stage. This is more, you know, you go into the solar plexus, which is the low above the root chakra, and you start to activate the solar plexus. And you take your power back, meaning, you know, we were raised to, you know, wait your turn, give it to them, let them have it, make sure you share. Now, that's all well and good. But in translation of that, we've taken away from ourselves. We've given everything away. We didn't even keep any reserves for ourselves. That's just what how it's been, this programming. And then, of course, the religions and this, I was raised Catholic, uh, former Catholic, that is. We were taught that if you don't sacrifice yourself to the point where, you know, you're like just suffering, you will be going to hell. You know, that's the cherry on top of this programming. And it's just ludicrous, you know, that that's even the case. Then at the same breath, they tell us there's a loving God who forgives everything. Which is it? You know, I always knew this, even as a little child, that something that doesn't make sense. So we have to learn how to take our power back. We have to learn how to give back to ourselves uh, and to create boundaries, of course, all with love and the highest good of all concerned, especially yourself. I'm guessing you do a lot of messages. I'm not sure how much now for individuals, but you get a, a lot of personal messages for people. Have the messages been changing recently as we appear to be going through a quickening or awakening process as a species or a planet? You nailed it. You nailed it. Actually, I do do readings. The way that they've changed it is that for me, the messages in these readings, and this has been so consistent, Yeah, they have been telling me to, in almost every reading I do, that everything that people have been doing up to this point, they have been only an apprentice mm -hmm. for their real mission, for their real soul mission. So everything they've experienced, everyone they've met, every relationship, every job, all the insights, it's just for the database. Now the mission begins. We are Operation Mission Earth right now. No more time to play. No more time to be lazy and say, I'll do it tomorrow. There is no more time to wait. We are in the thick of it, changing humanity, shifting in our consciousness, and stepping into our soul missions right now. Uh, most of my readings, mm -hmm. people call me in a desperate situation. That's what I mean when I say the universe will pull the rug out, of, uh, out from under you if you are not taking the cues yeah. from the universe, such as... I was at my job for 30 years. And I just got laid off. Where do I go? How could they do this? How could they just say goodbye in one minute? Well, you know, they didn't say goodbye, but the universe said, you know, we have to push you into your next mission. You can't stay in that comfy, cozy comfort zone. So, this is what's happening. People are calling me not knowing what's next in their life. Where do I go from here? What they've known 
is no longer. That goes for marriages, mm -hmm. friendships, health, careers, wherever the weak spot is for you. It has to be addressed right now and it will be addressed. And those are my that's what my readings are lately. I I have to show them and remind them of their soul contract. They forgot. Do we all at this time, is, is this a special time for humanity where we came in with similar soul contracts, like an overarching soul contract? Or, or, or why did we come through now? I just got the biggest chills. Uh, we all came here to watch the greatest show on earth, which is what we're watching. We are all spectators, but we are all points of light. Okay, and some people have bigger missions than others. Some people are here to have podcasts, write books, go on television. And some people are meant to walk in a mall and just have their light radiate out. And not even knowing it, they're touching people. They're touching people with their light. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. They came higher vibrationally higher okay they don't always know it but i can guarantee you most of the young ones uh my children especially young men now they don't want to be sitting behind a, a job a, you know a desk in an office they and the the exact words that usually follow with most people is i didn't come here to do this this is not what i'm meant to do so they know that they, they just don't know how to get, what is it I am meant to do? And the readings go into what they're meant to do. Is there a way on an individual lesson, we can start to learn more of what our soul path is? Because what I'm hearing you say, correct me if I'm wrong, is spirit is saying, we're pulling the rug out under from underneath you because you can have it the easy way or you can have it the hard way, but you can't live off path anymore. Well, it's hard to have... Uh, one foot in one world and the other foot in the other world. Uh, it starts to pull at you. It pulls at your energy. So that goes for a lot of the people who do not, um, they're not comfortable hanging out with the same people anymore, going to the bars and doing just like the mundane conversation about, oh, gee, where'd you get that pocketbook? Or where did you, you know, you, the, the makeup and this all great. And there's a place for all that with women, especially. But people are tired of, the mundane conversations. They want deeper meaning. Uh, so yes, that is the truth. That is the truth. And, and most people know now they're coming back online with the sun, the codes from the sun that we spoke about. So they no longer have the desire to do what they used to do. So they're finding themselves as these new people internally, and they need to get to know themselves all over again. Or even just initially, they don't know who they are anymore. It's it's quite interesting to watch this. It really is. If somebody's going around and going, I don't know. And I see this as a blessing. I see this as a beautiful thing. I call it the tabula rasa, the, the blank slate. If there was somebody's walking around going, I don't know who I am anymore. Where do you go from there? Well, what I try to remind people is, I don't like labels, Michael. I, I, I hate the word psychic. I hate the word medium. I don't even like the word... Uh, How about happy? I, I like that name. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> but you understand what I'm, where I'm going with this. Uh, don't put yourself in a box. Just be open to explore. Be open to adventure. Uh, get out of the fear. And also... Release what does not resonate with you. And don't do things to just please other people. Because you will find that as you're changing and you're not this people pleaser anymore and you're not at everyone's beck and call, those people will wind up having a problem with you. And they will tell you right off the bat, wow, you've changed. And my answer to that would be, yes, I have. Isn't it wonderful? They may not like the change because they're not getting from you what they were. So 
I always will say, honor yourself first. Um, have good boundaries. Know who you are. Uh, and it, this all boils down to a, a mutual respect. Respect that you have for yourself. Respect that you have for the creator. And respect that you have for other people. And that they should have mutual respect for you. It really is all about respect. And I also use the word deprogram quite a bit in, in my readings. And spirit gives that to me a lot. We are deprogramming right now. We're shedding off all of this nonsense that we don't need, these false identities. Uh, you are not your job. You are not your name. You are not your title you acquired. You're none of those things. That's just how, this is just what we acquired in this lifetime. Not always by choice either, is it? Well, it's a large part. Um, we were talking about affair that I have a school of mystics and you were saying that that I need to be teaching and 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 so you didn't know that I had this school of mystics, but one of the things that we're doing is is so much subconscious reprogramming right now and shadow work as well. But we're, what we're doing is stripping away the programs that we've been gifted that we don't even realize aren't ours. They're not, you know, and one of the programs that stands out in my mind, and they always have since I'm a little girl, is... I don't like when people exclude other people, yeah. whether it be in a school cafeteria, out on the playground, and even in our adult life, people can exclude you and make you feel not welcomed. Uh, but that boils down to another program, which goes back to the tribal days. If you're not in my tribe, you're not like us. You're not the same. You know, if you're not my color, whatever, and it, so on and so forth with this division. Um, but deep down, we're all exactly the same. That's another thing that really comes through with spirit. It's one of my pet peeves is not competing with one another. There is no competition. We're all the same and we're all here for the same reason. One day you may have it better. The next day I may have it better. Having compassion for your fellow man is like, and one day you can have that situation. Don't, don't judge and welcome people from all different tribes, you know, as far as that goes, try to understand the journey that, that they're going through, walk in their shoes for two minutes. So this all boils down to compassion. Beautiful. And would you say we're entering then mm, an age of greater compassion? Again, look at what's happened in the world since 2019. Boy, the stories that I can tell, that you can tell, that you've experienced that i've experienced compassion like we've never really experienced in our i would say our lifetime and it, it's far and wide with all the losses that people are having with all of the adjustments people need to make it's the shift it's the deprogram it's already happened and that's why you're here michael you're here to pick up these people when they don't know where to go when they don't understand what's happening, you're going to be the voice of reason and the light in the in the dark. You will be that. And that's what I was telling you earlier when we failed to hit the record button. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's partly my mission as well. It may be in a different yeah. way. Uh, so everyone will do it in a different way. Our healing powers are coming back online. We're learning what's been hidden from us such as sound and frequency and thought and thought processes you know that the healing is is just incredible that can happen with i love to break things down in its simplest form if you don't know that about me by now and what that translates to is stop going outside of yourself for the help because where you think you're going to get help those people are going to other people to get help. So where do, where's the right help? Where does, where does it originate? Within. Connection. Within. And so that voice is uh, the navigation system I spoke about. The divine guidance. We all have the download. We all came here with that. We all have that program. But we were taught to ignore it. Don't listen to that voice. Listen to our voice. 
you know, you know the voice I mean. What's interesting. So spirit told you about people in general. Now is the time, time to go from an apprentice. I believe you would say to your true self that we need to do that now. There is no waiting. And then for myself, uh, interestingly enough, you said not there's a shortage of time, but there's not much time left. And I don't believe you meant about my life, but to get to shift that gear. Is that both the same message for both the we and the me in this case? Yes, because this is a theme happening on our planet. Uh, how many people have you met that have had the rug pulled out from under them? Mm -hmm. And they have to find a new way. But the new way, if they try to go back to the old way, it's not working. Yeah. None of it's working. You know, if you really have a creative mind, just be creative. That's another reason why we're here. It's we have to find the way out of the maze. Uh, and that's what we do. We're all doing that right now. And no matter how much stuff they throw at us to try to distract us, bombard us, that's the powers that be. That's who I mean. Uh, try to throw us off our course. Keep focused. Know that you're here for the greater good. You have your part in this tapestry here on planet Earth. You absolutely have a purpose. You have a role. Some pur people's purpose will unfold better, uh, quicker than the next. Uh, what seems to be a tra tragedy always can turn into a blessing if you find the blessing in it. Sometimes pe the universe has to move things out of the way in order to allow you to see the truth. So whoever's in your life that's distracting you from your path, that can be a career too. It doesn't have to be just a person. Uh, that That most likely will be removed. So there's that clean slate. You start fresh, you make new friends. Uh, I'm finding that people are finding similar people that have the same way of thinking and have a similar vibration to them. Uh, just like the worker bee, we, we get the job done way better in higher numbers, for sure. So we're, we're, we're really God's army right now. And we, we got the call. The siren went off. The trumpet has sounded. We can't stay in our bunkers anymore. We have to get out. We have to do this. It, it's something you talked about. I, I'm just going to keep referring back. Everybody, forgive me. We're going to find our way through this. You said that it's time for, for Hanna Bear to get out and for Hanna Bear to be around other people. And that, that her mission is to open people's hearts and to help them uh, shine their own light. It sounds like at the same time, this is a time for all of us like you're saying, to get out of the bunkers. You were saying for, for Jessica and myself, it's time for us to do retreats, do it our way, but we need to kind of warm up the RV or the airplane and go to Costa Rica, for instance, and we need to get out there. But it sounds like what you're saying is it, it, it's no longer the Zoom world. It's it's uh, arm in arm, belly in belly, uh, uh, mano a mano or something, <laughs> or woman on, however we want to call that. It's getting out there and mingling again at an at, at a touch level and at a soul level. That's correct. Uh, you know, what Spirit was saying when we were speaking earlier was you can still do your Zoom and that will always be part of how people operate. You know, it's it's a it's a great technology to that's why we're able to be chatting right now. Yeah, and I love our class and I love our school. And there's to get everybody together, that'd be a little challenging. Not impossible, limiting belief, but that would be, you know, Zoom makes it easy. No, no, and that will always be. But then there is this in-person experience where there's no way your light can touch mine to the level that if you were all spending three days together out in nature, it's just you cannot match the energy being in the same room with the person. It's just like online dating or meeting the person, touching the person. As humans, we need touch. We need human interaction. Yes, again, I'm not bashing the internet, but spirit wants us to go back to basics where you can't put someone on mute because they're standing right in front of you. <laughs> 
You can't put a filter on. They're right in front of you. You can't put on all these masks or hide all these stories. You're in person. It is authentic. You have to be authentically you. And yes, this is the time because, you know, we've been being warned for so long now. But here we are. We're finding ourselves. And that's not to scare anyone and say, oh, God, what do I do? I have to go out tomorrow and find my purpose. It will find you. But if you stay in the fear, if you stay in the programming, if you stay in the mindset of let the other guy do it, you're going to kind of not have the easiest time on this planet. That's what's happening. Just do your part. That's all. That's all spirit asks. Do your part. How do we? How do we get to that essence? Is it going out Central Park, hanging out with a tree? And I'm not making light of it. This is actually very powerful. Hanging out with a tree and saying, "Who am I?" Is it what? What is it? It's different for everybody. But how do we start to get at the essence? Of removing all of these filters, all of these programs, all of these. Uh, gifts that we've been given by society, by the powers that be, whatever we want to call it, that aren't ours. How do we get at our true essence? You know, I've often asked myself that question over the years. And again, I bring everything down to its simplest form. That's how my brain works. That's how I understand things. And what I realized, this was my realization, and I would assume it's the same for everyone else, is you could call me Kim, you could call me Mrs. Russo. You could call me the happy medium. You could call me anything. However, the essence of who I really am in every moment is how I make people feel. It's, that's it. <laughs> how do you make people feel? What do you do to bring joy or light to a person? And that's my favorite thing of all time to do. My husband and I bowl. We bowl weekly. We're on a league. And there's a lot of elderly people that we bowl with. We, we live in Florida. Think about that. But, of course, there's plenty of people our age, too. But I get such a kick out of the older generation. Because, you know, they're a little... They're a little challenged, but they're still getting out there every week with this heavy bowling ball, and they're trying. They have so much knee brace, arm brace, all kinds of things, back aches. And my favorite things to do is to cheer them on, tell them how wonderful they've done, smile at them, ask them questions, just engage. You know, I just don't know. They're probably lonely and whatnot. And my husband has this joke going on that the whole bowling alley loves you. Like when they see you, they light up everyone. Now, I'm not saying this as any type of bragging. I do it on purpose. Live life on purpose. I know the reaction I'm going to get because I've gotten it. And just keep continuing it. Just try it. You don't have to do it in a bowling alley. Do it at your grocery store. Do it anywhere at your workplace, you know. Transmute the energy in the room. You have to. And you are the alchemist. Every person watching this is an alchemist. We just forgot how to do it. Which means then, my guess is that you don't have the radio or the TV or the social media or the YouTube on before you go into the bowling alley that says, there's this war, there's that war, the world is coming to an end, hide under your desk, this court case is taking place, it's the end of the government, it's the end of the this, it's the end of the that, the internet's going to be shut off. You're not listening to all that before you go in and go, and Care Bears stare the whole place. <laughs> I love what you just said, because that's a part of my reality every day too. How I navigate that is like for me, I'm speaking only for me. It yes. seems to work. Yesterday cannot be changed. The future has not happened yet. And all I have is this moment right here, right now, in this very second. And I will not waste this energy that I've been given here on this planet, in this breath that I have, to look at what may happen. What may happen. Now, I don't bury my head in the sand either. If you know me, I'm a prepper. I prep. I'm not stupid. So I prep for what could potentially happen. 
Uh, and then when I hear this is happening, that's happening, this is happening, I have a mantra that I say to myself, maybe I'm ignorant, maybe I'm naive. It works for me. And the mantra is, that's not happening on my timeline. And timelines are a consciousness. So a girlfriend once asked me, she says, Kim, how, what does that mean when you say that? Um, because things in the world are very real. There is famine, there is hunger, there are homeless people. I said, that's correct. And that's their timeline. I said, are you hungry? Are you homeless? She said, no. I said, then you're on a different timeline. That's not to take away one is better than the other. You are just on a different experience, AKA timeline. I love that. And additionally, I see us all as not just beaming light, but if you went at least into an old school movie theater, you're projecting and you're projecting an image, you're projecting an idea, or let's use your vernacular, which is, is, is so perfect. You're projecting a new timeline, which isn't just for your reality, but is for the reality of everyone around you. So if we watch that and go, that's not happening on my timeline, this is about to take place. Be, be afraid of, I don't know, code level yellow, orange, red, bombings, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not making light of any of that either. I know, if I know. you're projecting your timeline, you help somebody else to project a similar timeline. You help somebody else to project a similar timeline. And all of a sudden there's a ripple effect, a real, we can look at it on a quantum level. It's real. Energy is real. You have this ripple effect. And all of a sudden the world hops onto your timeline rather than you hopping onto theirs. And it's been proven the collective consciousness is what creates reality. That's a proven fact in quantum physics, right? We all project like on 9-11, you know, we were all in mourning at once. The Schumann resonance went sky high. I don't know if you heard about that, the, you know, the vibration of the earth. But I had on uh, uh, Dean Radin and uh, Dr. Dean Radin, uh, the, head of the Center for Noetic Scientists, and we talked about this. They were doing tests on earth at this time of... Uh, uh, RNGs, random number generators. And a random number generator is basically a computer flipping a coin. And a random number generator is usually, you know, 50-50. It's going to be heads, it's going to be tails. During 9-11, because everybody came to the same thought, same place at the same time, the numbers of the random number generator went billions, trillions, even beyond that to one, not random. Because everybody got focused on the same timeline and it literally alters reality scientifically proven now that's not i don't want to diminish that my heart doesn't go out to people that are in uh, hostage situations it's horrific that is so horrific i do my prayers i send all the energy i can i pray for the best outcome for everyone uh but again human nature's biggest fear is the fear of death and everything with fear boils down to the fear of dying. And so my mission is to show people there really is no death of consciousness. I work with a scientific organization as well. I volunteer for this organization and they mix the spirituality with science. And, and one day, and there's been many, you know, electrodes put on my head to prove, not just me, there's many of us mediums doing this work, uh, you know, marrying the science with the spirituality. And so if we can just accept the fact that none of us are getting out of here alive at some point, True. you know, if you don't fear death, you won't fear life. It's interesting because I look at, and somebody put all the puzzle pieces together for me recently. I look at this movement toward, um, biohacking to live longer um, and, and everything that's going on around live longer right now, which I think is a response to the fear of what's going on in the world today. It's live longer, but aren't what we're looking for is quality here and now in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you with the biohacking, but, but that's also part Not of that the there's anything wrong. I, I, I'm happy, you know, no. racing my bicycle to 120 to 220. Right, right. But it's like a psychological association. I, I That's what you're saying. Yes. Uh, 
It is, but it's also part of disclosure that's happening. We're learning mm. about what we were always able to do. So disclosure is very big in the age of Aquarius. So we will be learning a lot of things that we should have learned very early on, but it was kept from us, our, our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors. It's been kept from us. Uh, so that's why I like the indigenous cultures because they know the truth because this is how they live and they've always followed their ancestors' way of life. And this is what we're doing now. We're, we're learning what always has been. And not only that, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have to combat everything they're throwing at us health-wise, health what they're putting in the air, what they're putting in the food, in the water. We have to just, you know, kind of counteract that somehow, some way. We've never had to worry about this. There's no minerals in the soil anymore or in the food. So we have to go to these alternative methods to even survive. It, it's, um, it is unfortunate. But I love learning the new ways to kind of navigate so what i'm what i'm hearing now because I'm, I'm plugging in now <laughs> i'm plugged in the whole time but what i'm hearing is we get to go back to our roots and when i hear you say it's unfortunate it is on one level and at the same time and i'm sure you would agree it's bringing us back to mama earth it's bringing us back to who and what we are it's bringing us back to who and what we came here to be or the experience we had with dirt underneath our fingernails Yes, Aya. Aya is calling us. As I know you know what that is. Uh, Gaia, Aya, all of it. Here's the deal. What I meant when I said that is, years ago, if I ate an apple or an orange, I got everything the mother was giving me. Yeah. Now, uh, it's 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 void of that. You know, it's void of what it used to be. So we have to compensate. Uh, my future vision, because my guides did show me the vision, is, and this was shown to me right in the beginning of the pandemic, when I, myself, survival mode, we didn't know what this was. So, of course, I had to check in and do a tune-in. Uh, and I got this whole download that, There'll be sections of land again, and we will all be working together to farm the land to barter. There'll be a barter system. There won't be a monetary system, and everyone will bring their gift to the table. And there will be a nice, there will be order, but there will be um, sort of what's good for you also has to work for me. So it will be for the highest good of all. No one will be better than anyone. But they showed it to me as sections of land. Like when you look from an aerial view on an airplane and you see the squares, that it'll all be sectioned, but we'll all be working a section together. I don't know exactly what that means, but I did get the gist of it. Uh, because when they put me in that space, Everyone was working together and everyone was happy and healthy. And I just saw the sun shining and the, the land was, uh, you know, fertile again. Thank you. And, and, and it means that at least on your timeline and I'm, I'm hopping on yours or you're hopping on mine. We're hopping on this together. Uh, humanity has made it. It absolutely will make it. I'm not sure if I, I will be there physically, but I astrally went there. I, you know, projected to that time and space. And, um, and again, I already made this contract, so I know what I contracted for. I know when I came here. I'm not sure how long the contract is for, but I accept whatever it is because I agree to it, and I trust me. So if I trust me, it is what it is. A couple last questions, then I want to do a real Cliff Notes version of what we talked about earlier and, and, and let you go, because we, we've been on for quite a while, and I want to thank you because we had some internet challenges. How do we get, because one of the first things that you're stripped from, you, you talked about the Catholic Church, and I'm not going to pick on one organization or another, but-, but No, you know, that was my it, experience, it, it, yeah. 
and, and well, I went to, I went to Catholic high school, so I have had this experience. Um, okay. However, one of the and and I went to Catholic uh, nursery school as well, uh, so, um, which did have its beautiful moments too. Well, I got to say earlier, you had said it was something about me me bringing the light. My Hebrew name, because I then went to Hebrew uh, uh, the kindergarten. My Hebrew name is Meir, which is, means he who brings in the light. <laughs> Whoa, that's a confirmation. <laughs> Validation, really? Hello. Yes. So you nailed that. Um, because you were talking about earlier me carrying the torch. We are in our earliest days, we are taught that we're less than, that we're not enough, that the powers that be have the answers, but you definitely do not have the answers. So when you said, I know how to trust myself. How do we let go of this program and begin to trust ourselves again? Because we have a subconscious that has been programmed to pull out this giant litany, this giant list to point out why you shouldn't trust yourself. You know, I kind of was born that way. I always was that person who felt that I followed my heart. And that that's a really big expression for a reason. Um Sometimes the heart does not connect with logic whatsoever. Yeah. So when you can just let go of the logical mind, the left brain, which thinks it's, it knows the way. But the funny part is the left brain will always tell you the, all of the what ifs. Well, what if this happens? And I always counteract that with well, what if, what if it doesn't? So it's the unlearning. It's totally the mm. unlearning of the program, which is challenge yourself. I've had many instances when people told me, you'll never do that. That'll never happen. But I know it's happening. And I'm the co-creator. I'm the co-creator. So I always say, put in your part of the deal of whatever you want or whoever you want to see yourself, your life. Do your part and let spirit do the rest and have the patience to allow it to unfold. But yes, letting go of the program is the easiest way. People say, well, okay, Kim, that's easy for you to say, but I am trapped in my house with a parent who is disabled and we have no income. Uh, my lights are about to be shut off. I've always been a, a woman of great faith. I've always known that I never walk alone. I always rely on the higher power to provide for me, my family. Now, it doesn't mean that I get what I want all the time. But again, I, I allow for the experience and I do my best. People don't realize that everyone here has a path and a connection. If your parent is disabled, that's I have compassion for that. And I have compassion for what you're going through as the child. I was one of those children that had to take care of my, my parents. But I also want to understood that this is their journey. And it afforded me to have my compassion grow more. Sometimes these things allow us to have a deeper faith in the outcome. There's always reasons, but life does challenge us in every moment. And I say, just be up for the challenge, be up for the challenge. Right now, I think we're all going through this incredible birthing pains. We're all in the womb being pushed out and we're going through the tunnel and it's not fun. It's dark in there. And we have to use all of our muscles to push this baby out and that's exactly where we are right now and in the end we're going to make it we're all going to high five each other and say that was rough and but we made it <laughs> last question before we dive into real quick cliff notes and then i want to know where people can go to find all your work to find your books to ev everything that you have to offer and and in particular to have a session with you as well um, you mentioned we're working on the science 
uh, the science of being able to show that, in my words, there's life after life, that this is, it's actually, to me, it's another birthing. We're just a continuous series of birthings into this world through a tunnel, out of this world through a tunnel, into the next world through a tunnel. And what is the easiest way? If somebody said, how do I know that there is life after life, that this isn't it, that this isn't you know entropy, a- exit, uh, darkness, nothing more. What do you tell them? Or, or, or what's the one thing that you can give them to know that there's more? Speaking as someone who's able to receive messages from people that have crossed over, people that are no longer with us, uh, higher, I don't want to say masters per se, but higher wisdom beings, uh, it's always proved itself to me. It's always shown me the evidential information. I look for evidence. I don't give readings blindly i look for the evidence that's why i've been tested in with certain organ two organizations they've tested my abilities that's number one reason why i had to prove to myself that there really is life after death and i also study people that experience near-death experiences they all have the same story and it lines up with my my readings when i the way i see the other realms the things they tell me so it all kind of coincides that's that's first and foremost how do i know there is life after death now the other reason is I've experienced deep, deep love. And especially if you're a parent, I don't care if you're a parent to a fur baby. When you when you experience this deep love in your heart, this is the highest vibration that ever could ever exist and that any human would ever feel. The bonds of love can never be severed by physical death. Scientifically, if you want to put that in your pipe and smoke it, then that is your answer. We are too intricate. We love too deeply to have it all just poof away and never exist again. Just common sense, energy has been proven. It can only change form, but it can never be destroyed. And we are made up of pure energy. And that is for all the science-based people out there. That's your answer for that. So I kind of look at all of it. The vibrations, the love, the experiences that I've had, the messages that I've given that have transformed people's lives. Uh, The people on the other side always thank me for being their voice. They thank me with such gratitude. And I'm so happy to be the interpreter. That's what I am. I work between the worlds to interpret the good news that we do not die. How does it get any better than this? All right, Cliff Notes version. I guess I'll ask a few questions, like the summary version of things, because I, I don't want you to have to go into much detail here. Um, okay. It, it, feel free if you want to, of course. Um, so I'll first have to just, remember, uh, you know, I when I channel the information, Michael, it, it doesn't so come sorry. from me. So you might have to remind me. Okay, so what, let's 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 take it in order as best we can. First, you said that there is if we're if we're inviting her or him in, there is a spirit circling uh, as long as we welcome it in, which we are uh, for Jessica Hanna and myself. I believe that would be piece number one. Yes, that's correct. There's another soul knocking on the door. Uh, all you two have to do is open the door. I feel like you'll have a very different experience than you did at the last time, but that's okay too. Uh, I. I do feel masculine, but doesn't mean it's a boy. It's just a a real powerful warrior soul. It's just, it's just like rough and tough kind of. Like coming into no nonsense. Get the job done and, you know, change. It's like a top. Change a lot of lives in a short amount of time. So get ready for that. All right. Oh, my. <laughs> And and then that as a family, we're going to all work together on the same mission and we get to put ourselves out there. Yes, I did see a family unit, uh, like everyone working a different part of the operation. So everyone on, in your family, I see p- all the other people joining on board as well. I see uh, for some reason, I, I see a shaman joining, joining your team, a, sh- a real shaman. 
so you may be getting more into shamanism or shaman work. I'm not quite sure, but I see that kind of coming into your space as well. Uh, so this the team is being built now. So some of it you will literally have given birth to, but then others on your team will join as uh, as the time is right. Thank you. And you see us doing retreats. And it was interesting because you mentioned Costa Rica, which Jessica has been running around going, I don't know why, but I keep saying Costa Rica, Costa Rica. And everybody around me, with the exclusion of me, has been <laughs> saying retreats. So you mentioned that and you put one and one together and maybe it is. Uh, it, it's more connected to the earth. Maybe it's a Costa Rica. Maybe it's a Peru. Maybe it has that indigenous element. I would love it to have that indigenous element or a shaman through that uh, uh, teaching and grounding with indigenous wisdom and indigenous leaders. Well, when we spoke earlier, you, uh, I said, Michael, the, you know, the retreats don't have to be under in a conference room under fluorescent lighting. Mm -hmm. And you said, that's why I've been staying away from that. That's yes. your frame of reference. So they, the guides reminded you that it can be any way you want, and they'll help mold it with you. So there'll be ideas that pop up. Things will just become available. Uh, you'll get things donated to the cause. Uh, I see like a, a cook on board making all kinds of natural organic foods. I, I, I'm looking a little bit at these retreats. I can project there already. Again, a lot of it is that you just have to accept the the challenge or the task or not. But I feel like you will. I do. Thank you. Which also means we may be stepping back, not ending our show, but stepping back from as focused on show, at least this show. I, I really want to do something for uh, Gen Z as well, but more uh, as for everybody, more face to face. Well, you could look at it like that, or you could look at it as uh, you're doing three retreats a year and everything else is filling in uh so they won't take up they're not going to be consistent every weekend because it takes time to put together a retreat but i feel like that will also help you raise your vibration and you'll just be feeding off that energy and you'll just it'll give you the the drive to keep going with that and spirit will guide you as it always has as you go the Thought process of what's good for the family will always come into play in your mind. In your mind, this is what they're telling me. But they're saying that, <laughs> I see Jessica's like, well, that's okay. We could do this, this, and this. She's always giving the right answers um, to you. Because sometimes it looks like you do get a little bit limited in your thinking or your comfort zone. Uh, you said yourself you're a homebody. I'm a homebody who loves to travel, but I want things grounded and easy. You have so to because I... you're, you're an empath. Mm -hmm. So when you think about being around all this energy, yes, it's now a little bit overwhelming. On the head. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And I said that to Jessica. I feel like if I'm on stage, so to speak, at a retreat for three days, I will... And she's like, are you kidding? It will light you up. And I'm like, it will. I haven't done it. Well, she said, she said that, and they just said that. So with the two people saying that, and um, so I, I would definitely take this as your push, your, mm -hmm. your it, just enticement, enticing you, uh, showing you that it's um, anything that you don't want it to be, it does not have to be. You get to choose. That's you get to that. choose. That's right. I always remember that. I always remember that. I don't, if something's uncomfortable with me, uh, it doesn't mean I'll stay away from it, but I'll find the way to do it that it is comfortable for me. And and it, usually there's a million ways to skin a cat. <laughs> no offense to cats. Yes, quick question I didn't ask earlier. Do you see books coming through? What I just heard is the books are the extension of your experiences so you have to have the experiences first well then that makes sense because I'm, I'm i'm even have a meeting with an editor later today and i'll be having a few meetings of how we can take all of my teachings up to this point those are the experiences and turn them into there you books. go yes Perfect. that's an extension that's just an extension so yes that that there's a flow with that there's no roadblocks there thank you let's see so uh mama bear anything that uh, jessica needs to know on her path 
So, so spirit said, she's the brains behind the operation. <laughs> and they're oh, going to it. be, they're going to be giving her a lot more downloads and they have already. And the, this is what she's giving you as advice and guiding you and telling you what yeah. her ideas are. So mm -hmm. they come from, uh, well, Miracle was involved in that, your daughter as yeah. well. So, because it's a family affair, and I keep hearing that song. It's a family affair. So that's cool. Thank you. And then um, for uh, Hannah Bear, uh, you had mentioned that she gets to get out there. She gets to mingle more. Um, I believe you said that she's going to be a powerhouse, and she's going to open people's hearts. That's her mission. She. Um, it's almost like we need to get her around other children sooner rather than later because think about that's the generation so it's also she'll be infecting them with her energy in a good way is there anything we have to know globally for everyone for hannah bears certainly but for everyone in this new generation for instance she can see things we can't see we know she can hear things we can't see how do we keep that open in her how do we keep that open in the whole new gen don't ever discount their experiences. I know you don't. Some people do. I grew up with the generation telling us ghosts are not real, go to bed, it's your imagination. I think we've come a long way from there. Um, but I would say teach your children from the beginning that they're made up of energy and that this is a temporary flight that we have here on this planet. Uh, this way, they, they understand from the beginning who they are and the whole process and evolution of the soul. Teach them that. Have story time. And so nothing will be foreign to them. It's stuff they already know, you know, and if you bring it up to them, they will embellish on it because they came here with the upgraded system. They know all this already. You know, they'll embellish. They will start to talk about uh, my, my little niece, she's three years old, and she had a picture of her grandfather that she never met in her little playroom. And my sister was recently there for the holidays, and she says, oh, you have a picture. Who is that man? And she said to my sister, yeah, that, that's the man. He took my hand, and we were flying. And then I landed in mommy's belly. Oh, my God. So her grandfather that she never met, my sister's husband, who passed away, took her hand. She recognized him in the picture. They were flying, and she landed in mommy's belly out of the mouths of babes. Listen to the children. They, they're, they're not telling stories. So they're telling Kim, truth. When are you writing your series of children's books? Is that what you're picking up, Michael? Yes. So I've been told this many times that I will be working with children. There's been quite a few being uh, reaching out in my own family. So I'm going to start with that and see what how spirit opens that door for me. And uh, I think that that's not too far off the mark because I was one of those children. I saw all of that in a world where people really didn't know. my I was fortunate that my parents did not shoot me down. They did listen to my stories and they never made me feel like they didn't believe me. So I was very fortunate in that way. Uh, last that I have, and, and then I wanna know where people go find your work and channeling and everything is, um, and, and forgive me, Mama, Mama Bear has come in the room. Uh, uh, oh, you're just gonna take a seat next to and listen. Um, very good. Um, you had mentioned before tune up for me, medical tune up, not that there's anything wrong. Are there any words or guidance that you have for me? Kind of the cliff notes version. Yeah. Cliff notes version is just what it is. It's, it was, it was a quick message where, um, I saw something uh, particularly on near your ankle or the bottom part of your leg. I didn't tell you that, but no. sometimes I forget to say, but they just told me, tell them where, um, it looks like a, uh, something that might start out as, as an irritation and then it looks like it gets bigger. So you'll have to get that checked. 
by mm-hmm. a dermatologist or a doctor. They want you, they wanted you to go to, for blood work. And uh, you had said that Jessica had just gone for some blood work. I just yep. think that, you know, they want you to do it too because I'm not saying I see anything wrong. I just deliver the message. I don't read the mail. Okay. Fair enough. I like it. Thank you. Where can people go, Kim, to find your work, to sign up for a session with you, to find your books, to find everything that you have to offer? So the simplest way is to reach me through my website, kimthehappymedium.com. That's the simplest way. I'm very active on Instagram, Kim Russo Medium. I have a Facebook page, Psychic Medium Kim Russo. I'm pretty interactive, mostly mostly on Instagram. I do have a TikTok page that I have to post more on, um, more on that platform, I should say. My books are uh, all on my website. I have an online crystal store because crystals oh, cool. can help help you raise your vibration as we know and i surround myself by crystals i pack is that every... amethyst right behind you yes it is a whole vase filled with amethyst good job uh, i pack every order myself mm-hmm. no lie i send blessings out with each order i pick each stone with uh connected to the energy i'm sensing yep. and uh, that's all on my website so you know, it's not Amazon shipping, but you will get it. I promise because, you know, I do it all myself. I don't even have anyone helping me, but it's, it's something I love to do. And I'm being called to do right now. I have to touch the crystals every day. I put the orders together. I make the bracelets that I do it all. So I enjoy that for now. Hopefully we can continue that for readings. I don't open my readings to the public. Mm-hmm. I don't. It's word of mouth only. And, uh, you know, maybe if you email me and you say you heard heard about these readings on the Michael Sandler show, we'll try to get to you. I do have a long wait. Um, but leave your phone number. Well, we'll see what we could do. But I don't know. I don't open it on my website. You know, there's that too many sense. people. I appreciate everybody's requests. I really do. Um, but we spoke about boundaries earlier and how, you know, if you're on the airplane, you better put that oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help anyone else. So I do what I can. I'm doing my best. Um, working, hopefully, on getting more TV shows. I'm leaving that up to spirit, but I am doing my part as well. That's the two-step dance, and that that requires prudence and stepping forward. You're doing that. And and I'm I'm willing. So I told that to spirit. Uh, I always say, use me in any capacity you would like, because I trust that I'll be exactly where I'm supposed to be at all times, including right now here talking to you. This has been so beautiful. My this pleasure. has been so beautiful. Any last words? I think you've covered the full spectrum, but any last words that you feel called to share today? Uh, sure. I, I really just want to say, stay in your heart. That's where the truth lies. Something doesn't feel right. It's not right. Trust your intuition. It will never steer you wrong. Don't think that anybody else's voice has more, you know, power over your own thoughts or more wisdom. No one knows you better than you. Be brave, be bold, and just live with love. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Kim. How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you, Michael. You are so, so welcome. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, be brave, step into your power, be courageous, live fully now in this moment. We don't know how many more you have in this very precious moment and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! Wow, 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 what a special, what an uplifting. Do you feel the energy? Do you feel the light? Do you feel the love? This was the interview we needed to have to bring us all up right now. I feel at a time that we need it most. And as our angels and guides are saying, as we go down our own soul path, this is the time to step truly, fully, and completely out of apprenticeship and into who and what we truly are. Now, 
She mentioned that we're teaching, that we have a school of mystics, that we're helping to share your light to help bring you up to the highest level. So there are three ways that you can come join us. One, get the Daily Woohoo newsletter. It is the simplest, easiest way to get an energetic attunement and an energetic dose of vibrational goodness. You can go to the link down below. It's dailywoohoo.com. Second, you can learn automatic writing so that you can channel your own angels and guides on the other side of the veil. Super easy and simple to do. Simply go to automatic writing down below where I teach you live. I have live classes in this. And then if you want to bring your vibration up, if you want to strip away the negative program, the negative pattern, so we do subconscious work, we do shadow work, we do vibrational work, we do attunement work, we do all sorts of clearings and help you live from the higher room. Simply come to our School of Mystics. We have classes live four Wednesdays a month, plus recordings, plus so much more. Have the links for that down below as well. Love you guys so, so much. Here's a link to the next amazing show. Keep on shining bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this? Love you so much.